What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the Simply Car Things YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. And judging by the title of this video, you guys clicked on it because we are going to be diving into the install of my brand new coilovers for my BMW M4. And judging by the title of this video, I picked up a set of Bilstein Club Sport suspension. So without further ado, I'm gonna be giving you guys a full in-depth product overview of these coilovers. I'm gonna show you guys the install and then we're gonna actually get the car aligned and corner balanced courtesy of my friends over at Studio RSR located in Orange County, California, as well as Chewworks that are also located in the same shop as Studio RSR. So please go ahead and smash the thumbs up button as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel down below if you guys have not done so already. I would appreciate your support very much. And with all that being said, let's get into the rest of today's video. So here it is guys, these are the Bilstein Club Sports and I am so freaking excited to show off these coilovers and get them installed on my car. This is by far the nicest suspension I've ever had on any of my cars, like by a long shot. And uh, these were pretty expensive. I think they're around like $4,300, $4,400 brand new. And then you factor in tax and everything. This comes out to like 47, 4,800 bucks. So pretty expensive. They are the pretty much like the nicest uh, coilovers that you can get from Bilstein uh, for the F8X platform. You have the B16 or the PSS10 coilover system. And then you have the B16 Damptronic, which retains the factory EDC. And then you have the Club Sports, which is like the top of the line. It's designed for club sport use, obviously. So, you know, heavy track use, but also still streetable enough to where you can kind of dual purpose these coilovers um, whenever you're driving your car. So I didn't take out everything out of the box because for just for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna show you kind of the main gist of what you're getting here. So as you can see, this is one of the main portions of the coilover kit. This is the front strut right here. Now this uses Bilstein's uh, monotube gas pressure damper technology. Uh, Bilstein was pretty much the first to pioneer the monotube damper design, which is definitely superior over something like a twin tube damper. Uh, also, we have these really nice linear springs as well. I don't know the spring rates off the top of my head, but I will make sure to go ahead and list those in the description box down below. We also have this height adjustment collar and the kit does come with uh, spanner wrenches as well. Um, so you can adjust the ride height of the car, obviously. I think in the front, it's between 30 to 40 millimeters of ride height lowering. And then on the top right here, we have these beautiful camber plates uh, and you know, crafted from forged aluminum. Everything is made in Germany and really, really nice. Just the fit and finish and feel of the, this kit is just so nice and high quality German bearings as well. Bilstein branded sticker right here just shows like the part number tested on the Nordsch Life has like the Nurburgring logo. And uh, these are also double adjustable. So I don't remember if red is rebound or blues rebound, but one of these is for rebound, one of these is for compression. You have these really nice dials, very, very easy to adjust. You know exactly the position um, that they're in. They have 10 separate clicks for both compression and rebound. So I think in total you get about a hundred different combinations of damper tuning specifically. So these also, I forgot to mention, these do have a integrated reservoir for each individual strut which is pretty cool and um, saves a lot of space with the kit itself. And I think it saves weight as well compared to something like a KW Club Sport that uses an external uh, canister, external reservoir. In my opinion, overall, I'd say this is probably one of the best coilover kits you can buy before you're getting into the likes of MCS suspension, Nitron, JRZ, and some of those really high-end top dollar coilover brands. Uh, where you're looking to spend like, you know, seven to $10,000 on a kit. This is probably the next best thing in my opinion. It also does come with uh, these sway bar end links, which are shorter than the factory ones, I believe, because of the design of the coilover kit. So I do not believe the factory end links will work. You're gonna need to use these and Bilstein does provide them as well. Now moving into the back, this is the rear shock and uh, I believe this is the clevis mount is what they're called, which kind of mounts the rear shock into place. Again, these are double adjustable in the rear. So we can see our red and blue. Again, I don't remember the color coding for each setting, but compression and rebound uh, 
10 adjustable click settings for the shock. The rear is still a divorce setup actually, so you're not running a true rear coilover, um, unlike something like with MCS or, or Nitron or even some of the JRZ stuff. But again, I think for what I'll be doing, for the amount of tracking that I'll be doing and the amount of street driving, this will get by just fine. And we also have this rear spring, which is also a linear spring. And again, I will have those spring rates listed down below. So the kit does come with all the necessary hardware needed for installation. It comes with the instruction manual, comes with a bunch of cool stickers as well from Bilstein. And uh, packaging is top notch. Again, everything is, is just very well done with a kit like this. And you know, you're spending a lot of money obviously, so you're gonna get what you pay for. So I've spent enough time overviewing this product. Now let's go ahead and get over to Studio RSR and let's have their techs install this on my F82 M4. Cody at Studio RSR, he's the main tech and he was the one handling my Bilstein Club Sport installation. As you can see, he's removing some of the uh, plastic shrouding and covers that uh, sit over the coilover suspension as well as the different strut braces and bars. Normally you would disconnect the EDC sensors from the front struts as well, but in this case because I'm already running coilovers with ground control camber plates, uh, it's not necessary, the sensors are already disconnected. And as you can see, just gotta pop off everything to gain access to the braces. Now here we're removing the carbon fiber strut tower brace. Uh, I believe it's five 13 millimeter bolts, if I'm not mistaken, and then one 10 millimeter bolt that connects to the coolant expansion tank, uh, which all need to be removed in order to get that brace off. Now that the brace is off, we're just gonna set it down on this rack right here. And now you proceed to removing the strut tower bolts. And there are five of them. I believe they're a 16 millimeter in size, if I'm not mistaken. And at the same time, I, I could be wrong on that. I would just double check. Um, at the same time, you're also gonna be taking off that aluminum strut brace as well. Now keep in mind, because my car is a 2018 model year, it's LCI, uh, it's utilizing the five bolt. Uh, top hat design or whatever. Um, if yours is like an early 2015 build date, it'll be a three bolt, in which case the Bilstein Club Sports are designed for five bolt cars, I believe, but I think they do make a three bolt kit. Now that the brace is off, we're gonna proceed to removing the wheel. And you'll also want to disconnect two sensors. There's gonna be the uh, headlight leveling sensor as well as the wheel speed sensor. Next, we're gonna be removing the pinch bolt from the strut. It's a 16 millimeter bolt and nut that comes out. Now here, uh, the ground control camber plates utilize studs with a nut that fastens everything into place. So those uh, nuts are being removed. And now from here, you should have enough leverage to essentially pull down the entire coilover assembly just nice and careful without scratching the fender. And then here you're gonna utilize the spreader tool, which wedges itself in between the knuckle so that you can actually pry the strut out of the knuckle that it sits in, because it sits in with a lot of force and it's very hard to get out otherwise. Here, like I said, um, because the Bilstein kit comes with its own camber plates, Cody is using OEM hardware, which you'll need to be reusing. Uh, but in my case, I didn't have that because like I said, with the camber plates, they use a stud with a, a nut. So. Uh, we had to actually source OEM hardware and that took a little bit, <laughs> but got it done and basically thread them in and reinsert, go ahead and tighten down. Now I do believe the torque spec on these is 30 Newton meters, if I'm not mistaken. Um, very important that you are following correct torque specs and in the Bilstein user instruction manual, they do include all the torque specs, but if I remember correctly from the KWs, it's 30 Newton meters, so I want to say it should be the same with this. So right here now, Cody is disconnecting the sway bar end link, which is going to need to come out in order to uh, replace the OEM end links with the shorter uh, Bilstein ones, just because of the, the coilover design. Yeah. 
and proceeding with the installation of the newer end link, which just fastens on to the strut itself. I also did get a stud kit for my car, which I was really happy about because that was something I badly needed. Uh, so right here, you can see uh, Cody's also at the same time just installing this motorsport hardware stud kit. Super, super convenient for when it comes to putting your wheels on. At this point, everything is pretty much done with the front coilover, um, reconnected all the sensors, and now just threading everything back together and then got to torque the wheels down. Right here, Cody is assembling the rear shocks and you can see he's taking those clevis mounts and just putting them all together with the hardware that's included as this will be necessary for the install. What's really cool about the Bilsen Club Sport Kit is that both the front and rear uh, struts and shocks use pillow ball style mounts with spherical bushings, as you can see demonstrated right there. And the benefit of that is you just get a much more precise ability to dial in your alignment as well as much better suspension handling and fine tuning. And a lot of that gets translated into better steering feel as well. Here you're going to take a 21 millimeter socket to remove the eccentric camber bolt in the lower control arm along with a wrench. And as you can see here, he's using that wrench to sort of pry at the control arm, breaks it free from the wheel carrier, and he's able to pull that rear spring out. Here there are three E30 Torx bolts that mount the rear shocks to the top, and you'll just need to take those out as well. And from there, you should get enough leverage to basically sort of compress the shock downward and then uh, you know, pushing down on the control arm that should give you enough space to uh, remove it just as you can see right here. You would also normally disconnect the EDC sensor, but like I said, because I had coilovers, uh, that sensor is already disconnected. The new Bilsen Club Sport uh, rear shocks are now going in. And uh, one thing that I also wanted to mention is that I did pre-adjust the dampening settings already. So bump and rebound, I had already tailored those in for the, the dampers prior to uh, installing them because it's just a lot easier to get that done beforehand while they're out of the car uh, as opposed to installing them. I mean, you can still do it, but you just have to take the wheels off and there's less space. But the clevis mounts go in and then you just reuse the E30 Torx bolts and uh, you reinsert. Now the 21 millimeter eccentric camber bolt needs to be reinserted. And this can be tricky because it's a long bolt and it can be tough to align with the uh, control arm and the wheel carrier. Uh, but as you can see right here, Cody is using the combination of a few tools, a mallet to sort of tap the bolt in to get it to, to go, as well as that flat head prying tool, uh, just to create leverage um, and just to sort of get the suspension components to line up. And from there, you can go ahead and start tightening everything down again. And that camber bolt will be torqued to 165 Newton meters. The three e-torx bolts that mount the upper portion of the shock will also be torqued to 28 Newton meters. And that about sums up the install for the rear. Uh, the rears are a lot easier than the fronts, uh, mainly just because the, su the suspension setup is divorced, so it's a little bit easier to work with the components in my opinion. And then right here, we're just installing the Motorsport Hardware Stud Kit for the rear, using a little bit of Loctite, and then going ahead and torquing all those studs down. Makes installing and removing your wheels so much easier, and the likelihood of you stripping a wheel bolt is so much less with a stud kit, so another big benefit. Mm -hmm. 